Hey guys, uh, it is GED question of the daytime. And I just want to warn you that we have a little bit more of a challenging inverse operations kind of problem today. We've been building up this concept. They've been simple, but they're getting more challenging. So let's take a look. It says, which number could replace the question mark to make each statement true? So like I look at A, A says 17 plus 22 plus some number is equal to 47. So a little tricky here, uh, 17 plus 22 plus some numbers equal to 47. There's actually multiple ways that I could do a problem like this. Now I have to tell you the truth, I'm a math teacher, so I'm an algebra ninja. And I know that the easiest way to do these kind of problems with unknown values is to use algebra. But a lot of my students are scared of algebra. So I'm gonna just try to use some reasoning uh, instead of going what would be probably the simpler way with algebra. So let's take a look at A. Um, taking a look at this, well, you know that 47 here is a total. Uh, it is a total of three numbers adding up. I see three numbers here. So I know that 47 contains 17, 22, and some other number in there. Well, I think what I'll do is I'll take out the pieces that I don't need to think about, the 17 and the 22. Now, to do that, I think let's put them together first. So let's find the total of those pieces that I don't know or that I do know, I'm sorry, I know the 17 and I know the 22. So I think I would probably just try to add these together first. So 17 uh, plus 22 is 39. So I know that that portion, that known portion of that number is 39, but I've got more than that. I have a total of 47. So I could count up to find that 47. Sure, why not? So from 39, I would go 40, 41, 42, and I'm using my fingers. 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. Looks like I had to go up eight more uh, to get from that 39 I already had to 47. And so I'd say that a number that could replace that would be eight. Let's look at B. B says 110 minus something is equal to 46. 110 minus something is equal to 46. And now this one's not actually as bad as the last one because there's just, uh, you know, it's not a multi-step problem. It's just one little number, 110 minus something. So I think I'll use the inverse operation here. I'll take that, ooh, I already know the total. Ooh, I just changed my mind about how I'm going to do this. I know the total is 110. In subtraction, the first number you're starting with is the total. And I know if I take away a piece, it'd be 46 left. So let's try this. Take the 110, take out the 46, and I'll still know the size of the other piece. So I'm still going to use subtraction because I know the total and find the size of the other piece. So let's see. Uh, borrow here. Uh, 10 minus 6 is 4. I can't, oh, 10 minus 4 is 6, so I would have 64. So 110 minus 64 is equal to 46. And if you didn't believe me, you could try adding those two numbers together, and you would see that indeed you do get 110. Now this one's also a little tricky. 22 plus something, I don't know what, all divided by 7 is equal to 4. Now don't freak out by the gross fraction here. Remember that I'm just saying take whatever this total is up here and divide the whole thing by 7. So let's think about what number divided by 7 is 4. What number divided by 7 is what? Well, of course 28 divided by 7 is 4. That means I need this whole top here to be equal to 28. Well, how can I get from 22, add something to get to 28? Well, let's see, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. I'd have to add six here. Let's check if that really does work. Does 22 plus six divided by seven really give me four? Well, 22 plus six is 28. And if I divide 28 by seven, indeed I do get four. My answer checked. So C should be six. Okay, D, I'm saying two times something times three is equal to 36. Now, I hope you guys know, it's known as the associative property. I can multiply, I can group these in any order I want. So if I wanna just start by multiplying two and three together, I can. So two times three is six. So I'm really saying six times some number. There's my six times some number. Six times some number is equal to 36. Well, six times what number is equal to 36? Sorry, I meant to write a question mark and I run a, wrote a 2. 6 times what number is equal to 36? Of course, that's 6 times 6. So the answer here would be 6. 
Okay, another tricky one, E, I'm asking, you know, what number plus two, if I take the whole thing and square it, will be equal to 49? I guess I, I, I'd kind of work backwards again. Here's one thing I know. If I want to talk about what number squared is equal to 49, I know what number times itself is equal to 49. That's 7. That's 7. So 7 squared is equal to 49. So look at these parentheses. I need to build a 7, some number plus 2. From some number plus 2, what number plus 2 would equal 7? Of course, it'd be 5. So the number that would replace that question mark would have to be 5. Again, let's check our work since this is a complicated problem. Let's take a look if this really does give me 49. 5 plus 2 is, of course, 7, and if I were to square 7, I would get 49. Great, my answer checked. So A was 8, B was 64, C was 6, D was also 6, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, 6, and E was 5. If you have any questions about this or any other GED topic, be sure to drop it in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer it.